Welcome back, everyone. We're Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news, the daily fail, meme reviews, software releases, hardware releases, and the pleb sites. Joining us today, we've got return guest Dr. Jeff Ross. That's right. He is the pleb counselor, the founder and CEO of Vail Shire Capital. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. Phil, Nico, thanks so much. I'm really excited to be here. I'm honored that you invited me back. Absolutely. Come on. This is this is the time to shine. Here we go. Okay, Nico, <laughs> let's dive into the numbers, my friend. Number time. Brought to you by Noddle. They make some of the best Bitcoin nodes like the Noddle One. It's in black. It's really cool colors. Anyways, run your own version of Bitcoin Core and the Lightning Network and Whirlpool all in the comfort of your own home. Remember, guys, if you don't run your own Bitcoin node, you're using someone else's. So get yourself a Noddle Bitcoin node today. At the time of this recording, the block height is 741,089. The Bitcoin price, 20,705. Chain rewrite day, 734. Total public lightning capacity, 3,975.61. Moscow time, 4830 blocks to the halvening, 98,911. And the Samurai Whirlpool unspent capacity Samurai Whirlpool is a coin join or collaborative spend. It is not a mixing service. And the unspent capacity for that pool is 4,644.60. Nico, the numbers again. You're muted again. <laughs> Oops, we can't say we can't keep saying that Bitcoin is the new stable coin because we made that joke for like four months at Bitcoin at 30K and then it just dumped. It went in the wrong direction. Anyways, um, I got some interesting data to talk about today. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that we have a very special guest on today to, to talk a little bit about these uh, these these statistics. Um, anyways, uh, let's let's pull it up. I was better yet call it data. Um Let's take a look at Glassnode, shall we? Um, so the number of Bitcoin addresses with 0.01 or more is continuing to go up. Let's take a look at 0.1. Also, it's continuing to go up. Looks like a lot of people are stacking addresses with one Bitcoin or more continues to go up. It is, we have 848,000 Bitcoin addresses with one Bitcoin or, or more. Uh, let's take a look at this. The balance on exchanges, it continues to go down. It actually peaked uh, March 18th, 2020, and has continued to go down. Really interesting. Now, this is the thing that I wanted to talk about today because it looks like we broke a record recently, especially with this latest crash. Bitcoin net realized profit slash loss. That means net realized profit slash loss is the net profit or loss of all moved coins and is defined by the difference of realized profit, realized loss. And we broke a record. Check this out. The realized loss with that dip was $202 million. And that that's a record. Bitcoin's never done that before. Um, so absolute hammer blow. Jeff... How has the how has this collapse been? Were you surprised? I think a lot of people saw this coming, especially with the position that the Fed is in right now. They have to deal with inflation, but they want to do a soft landing as well. We all know that soft landing is going to be very difficult to say the least. Jeff, what are your thoughts on this, man? Oh, man, I have lots of thoughts. So I've been bearish since January. Uh, I actually said somewhere back when Bitcoin was 40,000 that I would not be surprised that it may drop as low as 20,000, get literally cut in half. I got laughed off many stages for saying that. Um, uh, not that I'm prescient or anything, but I thought, man, the macro that's coming up that we're going to be dealing with is going to suck. And I said back then, like, yes, this is ugly, but we haven't even hit the rough patch yet. And now we're in the rough patch. This is what the rough patch looks like. The macro is terrible. It's awful. There's nothing optimistic that I look at. I mean, uh, consumer confidence is way down. Uh, manufacturing is way down. Housing starts are way down. On and on and on. You literally can pick out any stat and it's way down. Some of them are at all time lows. Um, most of them are at just basic like deep recessionary type lows. So it portends to really uh, ugly things. 
Bitcoin, unfortunately, is still misunderstood by the majority of market participants. So they treat it like a small tech stock. It acts like a small tech stock. It is not anything like a small tech stock, but most people who trade it think that it is. So that's why it goes down also because of liquidity issues, other things that we can talk about. Um, the question I'm more interested in is what do we do from here? Because when I look at all these metrics on chain kind of analytics, um, uh, looking at adoption rates, Metcalf's law, those kind of things, you showed those great charts. They're very simple, but I think they're very telling. Just adoption. How many accounts are we seeing that have 0.1 Bitcoin or 0.01 Bitcoin, blah, blah. They just keep going up, right? Up and to the right. As long as we're seeing that Metcalf's law is still in effect, the value of the network is increasing, hash rate is increasing, security is increasing. Um, these are bargain bin price, uh, prices right now. I'm just ecstatic about it. I, I tell people like, quit trying to time the market, quit trying to pick a bottom and pick tops, those kind of things. Learn to recognize value. We are deeply under value right now in, in the Bitcoin space. It may go down to 15 or 10 or five, I have no idea. But all I do know is that it is an incredible value right now if you're a long-term saver and you should be. Um, so if your time horizon is two years or more, normally I say 10 years or more, but at this point, if your time horizon is two years or more, I think you will be very well rewarded for buying these days when there's blood on the streets and everybody's panicking and everybody's calling for the demise of Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you said something really interesting earlier when, about it being treated like a tech stock um, or a risk on asset. I hear, I hear that fancy term used all the time. So I'm going to use it. Um, when is the decoupling going to happen, Dr. Ross? I posed this on a Twitter spaces just before this, and I said – who says, where is it written? I want somebody to show me where it's written that Bitcoin has to keep declining in price just because we're entering deeper recessionary type conditions. Why does it keep having to be coupled with tech stocks? And everybody like, oh, well, it has to go down and blah, blah. I'm like, why? Like, it is the world's safe haven asset. It is the world's best money by far, hands down, no question asked. It is the antithesis of the US dollar and all government fiat garbage. People should be flocking and fleeing to Bitcoin right now. So um, when will it decouple? It may happen. And I'm actually sort of cautiously optimistic. I'm almost embarrassed to say because I got like laughed off the stage when I when I brought this idea up. It's, it's so deeply undervalued right now. And if ever there was a time that attention should be drawn to Bitcoin as being a disinflationary asset versus an inflationary asset, um, as being better money, as being you know non-governmental, apolitical, all of the features of Bitcoin, decentralized, not controlled by goofy central banks, all these kind of things, this is the time. And so I'm optimistic and I'm probably wrong and I, I'll accept it if I'm wrong. But I think we start to see some serious decoupling uh, in the next six months. So that's I'm on record saying that. I'll probably be wrong, and, and you, you all can laugh at me too. But um, I'm I'm quietly optimistic in in the, in my deep pessim pessimism for the macro setup right now. Um, I'm buying. Well, I appreciate your honesty because a lot of people can't do that. Um, Phil, what are your thoughts on this? What do you what, what is what is your looking? Are you are are you uh, as optimistic as Jeff? You're muted. Ah, you did the same thing I did. <laughs> Damn it, muted. <laughs> Trying to be polite and then we end up ruining it. Okay, so you know what? Um, I I mean, look, I, I'm always a permable, um, but in terms of in terms of decoupling, I, I think that there's a, and, and Jeff can definitely call me on this because uh, he, he understands this picture way better than I do, but I think that there's a lot of human emotion at play and there's a lot of just our human behavior. And although, you know, we've said this before, even though we, you know, we are big advocates of Bitcoin, you know, th there's a lot of people that are stacking sats that have not, that have not uh, made the conviction right, have not gathered the conviction that we have in it. And for them, as soon as they start to see some people see some market turbulence immediately, you know, they want to sell out into a cash position. Right. And, and they don't understand that they're actually they're actually selling out into a lower quality position. That being said, I want to go back to something you said at the beginning about this soft landing business. I, look, this is all bullshit. I, I, I don't understand how they say this stuff. How do we quantify what a soft landing is? Like what, what a soft landing may be to a hedge fund 
is going to be completely different to a mom and pop shop on the street. It's completely different. So Wall Street, Main Street, all these these are different streets. These are different views. And the other piece that I wanted to say uh, to Jeff's point, right? A lot of people, uh, when it comes to timing the market, the reality is almost nobody sells the top and almost nobody catches the bottom. We all live in the gray zone. Okay, that's the middle. This is where you're going to do the majority of your accumulation because it's it's almost impossible to time the bottom. Right. Everybody sits there and they talk about, oh, we're waiting for capitulation. I understand that feeling. I know because I'm a sucker that looks at charts and I think to myself, ah, you know, maybe I could figure out when capitulation has happened. But do I really know? No, I have no idea. The only way that I really know is after it's happened and Bitcoin has already started to run away from me again. And I'm like, oh, that was it. So you know what? DCA, you're not going to catch the bottom. You're not going to sell the top. Enjoy your life. Bitcoin is here to stay. And listen to the pleb counselor, Jeff Ross. He knows what he's talking about. And he even said it. If he's wrong, he's going to admit it. He's wrong. And this is the point of being a pleb, right? Most of us, look, we, we understand Bitcoin as much as we do, but we also understand that we don't know everything. So, hey, it's good to be humble. It's good to be objective. And just keep stacking your sats. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. Right. Uh, unlike the credentialed class that was telling us that inflation was transitory. They can't admit <laughs> that they were wrong, but we can because we're plebs. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the daily news brought to you by CryptoCloaks.com. They make the best 3D printed Bitcoin merch, like the famous 3D printed Bitcoin grenade toy. You want in simply Bitcoin colors? You could do that. You want it in gold? You could also do that. The European store is now open. And if you want to build it yourself, they just release an open source node case. Anyways, you can take advantage of the promo code down below to get 5% off CryptoCloaks.com. Following up on the Celsius debacle, looks like the regulators are now getting involved. Things aren't adding up. Anyways, just check out this article by Reuters. Uh, June 16th, state security regulators in Alabama, Kentucky, New Jersey, Texas, and Washington are investigating crypto lender Celsius Network's decision this week to suspend customer redemptions. Joseph Rotunda, enforcement director at the Texas State Securities Board, told, told Reuters on Thursday. Celsius said that due to extreme market con- that makes no sense. <laughs> It sounds like to me they were gambling with people's money. It was pausing withdrawals, swaps, and transfers between accounts. The company said that doing so would put it in a better position to honor over time its withdrawal obligations. When everything when everything's going up, everything's all right. I'm very concerned that clients, including many retail investors, may need to immediately access their accounts, yet are unable to withdraw from their accounts. The inability to access their investment may result in significant financial consequences. Um, Anyways, I I love this part. Um, It says, Celsius and CEO Alex Mashinsky did not immediately respond to requests to comment. Anyways, uh, I would I wouldn't be surprised if Celsius was the last to fall. Um, I think this happens every not I think I know this happens every bear market. It just every all the garbage just gets flushed out. Uh, Jeff, were you surprised? Were you keeping it? Corey did an amazing job. So shout out to Corey. Love the Swan guys. Uh, they absolutely he absolutely just called that out and he, he's had a record right it's he called out Celsius he called out the Luna mm-hmm. and he called out I think one other but I can't can't it's not coming to mind uh Jeff what are your thoughts on on this collapse bro it looks like regulators are not getting involved yeah uh, this is what happens in bear markets right when the tide goes out you see who's swimming naked we're seeing which crypto companies are swimming naked and you see which people are are doing kind of uh what, what should we say shady uh financial policies to 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 get these yields um you know look i i don't wish I, i'm a nice guy i i don't wish the demise of of anyone or any company but man people you get what's coming to you in these bear markets you know Corey has been prophetic right i mean it's been incredible and uh i jumped on the bandwagon terra luna i got reamed by the lunatics for warning them that their that their investment investment speculation was risky right and i said it's literally just built on nothing and so i was i was along with Corey talking about that and then it crashed and then it people went from saying you know um 
how dare you say that it's risky to you you cause the, the the fall of this you know so celsius is a different thing it's a it's an actual company um i am not 100 percent convinced that it goes to zero but it's every day it looks a little more like it's creeping closer to being a zero to going insolvent um if the um bitcoin and crypto uh leech market can um recover sooner than later it could possibly survive i'm not optimistic um i mean man you guys you, you, we i know you guys preach this all the time but not your keys not your coin like don't scramble for yield i get it if you if you know if, if people wanted to do a little bit they probably learned a painful lesson here a little bit um this is why you, you hold your own keys this is this is a perfect example of that so it's the school is stupid if you if you paid some uh, tuition for that school by by going down with celsius Put it in your pocket. Remember this. Like, do not do this. Turn into this is why people become Bitcoin maxis and hold their own keys. So, anyways, my heart goes out to these people, but but don't let this educational opportunity pass you by. Absolutely, uh, Phil. Now that regulators are getting involved, is uh, the the inventor of the voice over IP, the VoIP, Alex Masinski, the CEO. Is he in legal pro in legal problems? You know what? I mean, they may end up with some. We're, we're not lawyers, by the way. No, we're, not lawyers. Okay? we're not lawyers. <laughs> we're not lawyers. We're just we're just Zero talking. Creds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Zero creds, right? But it definitely doesn't look good for him. I just want to point out because I saw that tweet yesterday, and and this is the strange thing, right? This is to me that this is part of the red flags. He's talking about how his team is working around the clock trying to fix the issue. Okay, he's explaining how the community's been great, all of the support. Let me tell you something. For those of us that have been in this for a few years and that saw the scams of the previous uh, the previous bull uh, bear cycle, let me tell you, when those scams went belly up, they were also cheering on their community and their community support and how everybody rallied around them. Let me tell you something. When you actually are doing what you say you're doing and you are uh, and you actually hold the assets that you claim you do give a fuck about the community support. OK, because you've actually got the coin to pay the bills. OK, there is the other piece that I wanted to say, which I put out in a tweet yesterday. It's completely insane. It's insane that the volatility is being used as an excuse for not being able to withdraw the funds, because if they did indeed have the funds that they claim they do, it shouldn't matter. So the reality is, is that Celsius, excuse my language, fucked with people's money and they got busted. Okay, they got caught and, and that's it. He can't hide it anymore. So to your point, you, you know, you don't want to see people get wrecked, right? Like you don't. But to your to your other point, it is a teaching. It is a learning opportunity that you should not let pass by. People like us, like myself, learned from getting wrecked in the last market. OK, so and the last piece that I wanted to say was. How come uh, they didn't have this problem with Bitcoin's upside volatility going to 69K and people were able to withdraw just fine? But now the downside volatility, whoa, hold, hold the phone here. We, we can't let you take any money out just yet. We, we need to fix some things. The, the team is looking into it. Th this is psychotic nonsense. Anyways, I, you know what? Maybe they don't go to zero. Maybe they pull a BitConnect and all of a sudden do some kind of a fork and like try to come up with something else. But the red flags should have been there as soon as they released their sell token. Uh, I remember when this product first came out, I was like, oh, wow, Bitcoin only. Uh, OK, you know, and he's the creator of voice over IP. Uh, all right. There's some again, right. Creating the trust narrative. But then then they launched a shitcoin, And as soon as they did that, I was like, OK, this thing. This thing's garbage. I I can't explain why it's garbage yet, but I know it's going to fall apart. And there you go. Anyways, Man, it, it's it's crazy. Let's see. Let's see the legal ramification. This is just the beginning. That article came out today. Anyways, uh, taking advantage of Dr. Ross coming here on again. We're going to talk about a topic that we've advocated for strongly on this show. And basically what we've been saying is that use Bitcoin as savings. Don't don't uh, speculate, don't leverage yourself, but use it as savings. And one of the one of our favorite sites that we pull up all the time, I really recommend it. It's called Priced in Bitcoin 21.com and it really shows the power of what we're talking about. And these are just consumer goods, 
right? And look, the short-term volatility of Bitcoin is unknown. You don't know it. But over the long period, because it has a 21 million cap supply and because of the artificial supply shock call caused by the halving roughly every four years, you definitely want to use Bitcoin. Anyways, check this out. Uh, the medium new house price, we've known how high house prices have gone up due to the money printing. If you were in save, if you were saving in Bitcoin, house prices have actually fallen 39%. Average new car, 45%. Chicken breast, 44%. Steak, I know Bitcoiners love steak, 32%. It's funny because out of all these things, the steak is <laughs> eggs. Wow, I guess eggs are expensive, 25%. But any life gets cheaper. And if you hodl for five years, gets even cheaper than that. These things look like shit coins because of how far they've fallen, but they're not shit coins. Everyone loves steak. But if you've been saving in Bitcoin, steak has actually gotten cheaper. So Dr. Ross, could you add to that? What is the power of saving in Bitcoin? I love it. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but my pin tweet that I've had for, I don't know, a year or something is exactly this. The longer you save in US dollars, the more expensive life gets. The longer you save in Bitcoin, the cheaper life gets. It's just math. It's just the way that they're both programmed. It's the monetary policy of both forms of money. By the way, I'm, I'm uh, giving the US dollar too much credit by calling it money. It's actually a fiat currency. It's only money by decree. It's not a real money like Bitcoin is. So yeah, hey, there it is right there. See, it's inflation versus disinflation. And this just holds over time. And people like come at us all the time, especially this year, right? Bitcoin's down. Oh, you said it was an inflation hedge. And oh, what about debasement? Blah, blah, blah. How, how come it's going down? And it's blah, blah. And I'm like, you guys back up a little bit. Look three years out, five years out, seven years out, 10 years out. It is clearly on a, this downtrend, right? Where everything is getting cheaper, 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 cheaper. Can you imagine a life like that? Like we all grew up with inflation just being the norm, right? I mean, I'm 47, I'm old. So when I was a kid, a Snickers bar and a vending machine was 25 cents. I remember when it went up 30 cents and then it was 35 cents and then 50 cents. You know, I'm like, well, why does it do that? That's weird. And, and everything just seems normal, right? Another example I like to give is I, I now have kids who are college age. The same college that I went to back in the like early to mid nineties is four times more expensive than it was when I was there. And I'm like, I tell my kids, this, I'm like, do you think the quality of education has increased by four times uh, since I was there? And I like, actually, I think it's probably decreased, honestly, because uh, I'm a little skeptical of the current uh, educational system. But all, all, that, all that aside, that's what inflation is. It's garbage. It's ridiculous. And the Federal Reserve and the government have made it seem like that's normal and it's good and it's healthy. And what are they really doing? They're stealing the purchasing power of us, the citizens, so that they can get bigger, they can survive, they can take on debt that's not possibly payable in sound money. So they have to depreciate, debase the currency in order to pay back this massive, massive, massive amount of, of debt that they have. Anyways, it's tragic. It's terrible. That's why Bitcoin exists is to get us to a world where life gets cheaper the longer you hold Bitcoin. Absolutely. Uh, before I pass it on to you, Phil, one more question for you, Jeff. Um, in The Price of Tomorrow, Jeff Booth's book, he mentions throughout the book, if we allow it to happen or if governments allow it to happen, a deflationary future. What is your stance on that? Are you from the the side of Bitcoin's in an inevitability like we are because Bitcoin's incentives are just stronger than coercion, which is what governments are going to going to need if they want their CBDCs to beat Bitcoin. Um, what what school of thought are you on? What side are you on? Are you is this inevitability? Do do, do the right things need to happen? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, not to just, you know, be a yes man, but I think it's absolutely inevitable. I, they're, they're, it's clearly better money. Like you, if you put any thought into it in any study and study what money is, why does money exist? Why does government control money currently? Is that a good thing? Is it necessary? What are the best properties of money? You, you can't you can't think about that kind of stuff and not come away with Bitcoin is simply the best money. It's simply better money for a better world. And so the world is just kind of behind the eight ball as usual, right? We're the sort of early adopters who figured it out a little sooner than most people. The world will figure it out eventually. And actually, honestly, 
at least half of the world's population will never really get it. They'll just start using it because it'll just become sort of like the internet. Most people don't understand the internet or how it works, but now everybody uses the internet, even though they have no idea. The exact same thing is happening with Bitcoin. I tell people all the time that hyper Bitcoinization, I'm kind of bastardizing the word here, but I think it's already underway. Um, we're seeing it happen like can you imagine five years ago, how many pieces of news we have every day that are Bitcoin centered pieces of news, even in this massive bear market right now, politicians are talking about it, countries, you know, are adopting it or they're meeting about it. Corporations are have it on their, on their, uh, you know, agendas. Um, Lightning Network is, is expanding. Use cases are expanding. Um, you can pay with Bitcoin now and more and more, blah, 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 blah all that stuff. Th that would have been just insane to even imagine five years ago that it would be at the forefront of society as much as it is to me it's just absolutely an inevitability it's happening you can deny it all you want but it is happening um so i just recommend to people that you you, you quit being so stupid and and take the time to figure out why it's better money sooner than later so that you can actually benefit from the rise of the price uh, that's also inevitable with the uh ascension of bitcoin absolutely uh phil tie it up yeah. So just to go on, just to go on with uh, with what Jeff said, a couple of points. Um, I totally agree. We are in the early stages of hyper Bitcoinization. Um, this, you know, I, I mean, I would even people could even suggest that hyper Bitcoinization started as soon as the white paper dropped. Right. Because really, it's it all depends. It all depends on where we are in the stage. Right. Just because things are moving slowly, just because adoption is happening at a trickle doesn't mean that that is not part of the process. And it doesn't mean that we're not in that whole entire long game. Um, so you uh, you know, you aged yourself. I'm going to age myself. I'm 43. So we're from the same generation. Right? I'm only five years younger than you. We're Gen Xers. So we were the first generation, as I've said in the past, we were the first generation to earn less than our parents on a grand on we'll say on a grand scale now the reason why i'm explaining that is is that i think everybody should check out the book dumbing us down okay it's a very interesting book eye-opening about our education system and why we are being taught what we are being taught in general so i, I think that everybody should check that out i really enjoyed it um and the last piece to this is the u.s dollar purchasing power right so look, I understand that it's painful to, to see Bitcoin drop 40%, 50%, 60%, but wouldn't you be really pissed off if your purchasing power dropped 99% and you didn't know it? I know, I know I'd be super pissed. So when I found out, I was super pissed, okay? Because that's what the US dollar is doing. And this is, and it's not just the US dollar, right? We're not just gonna pick on the US dollar. You can go take a look at other currencies, such as the Canadian dollar. You can go take a look at the Euro, okay? All of these are losing their purchasing power at an alarming rate. And this is because the monetary policy is being handled by human beings. They can constantly change it. OK, and, and the other piece to this is that they're not all on the same team, right? You know, like the, the, the Europeans, the Americans, right? They're not all on the same team. All of these currencies are battling. So there's a whole bunch of shenanigans that are going on in the background that people like me do not really know in depth. So you know what? Bitcoin, we get to remove the people remove the shenanigans and just stick with the censorship resistance, the decentralization and the hard money. And, and I'm good with that. Amen. Wow. Love it. Preach. brother. Woo. Anyways, Phil, you tied it up perfectly. It's time for the daily meme review brought to you by Citadel 21. It's the best Bitcoin cultural zine. It's stories, articles, comics by plebs and actual bitcoiners this is the artwork for volume two this is the artwork for volume 10 this is the artwork for volume 11 it just dropped and they're scarce there's only a thousand physical copies made per volume get your prints of citadel 21 today before they run out all right everybody welcome to the bitcoin meme review where we review bitcoin memes not only are they an essential part of Bitcoin culture, they play an essential role in this narrative trench warfare that we're fighting hand to hand on the battlegrounds of the Internet. Anyways, let's get to the first meme by the legendary psychedelic Alberto. I, I would call him the original pleb, bro. He was one of the first plebs, Phil. Anyways, um, he was one of the first toxic accounts that I saw on Bitcoin Twitter. And I was like, where do these people get this conviction about Bitcoin? Yeah. <laughs> I am obviously I am obviously not following the right people and I'm definitely not doing the right research. 
Anyways, continue. Sorry. <laughs> this is Pinocchio, uh, for anyone who doesn't get that reference. And this is BitBoy. We actually covered that. Optimus covered this yesterday. Um, if some of y'all only knew me for real, it's, I, I don't have a lying bone. In my, it's hard for me to read this. Um, I'm not always right, but I'm always honest to honest. So this is BitBoy. I mean, yeah, BitBoy's attempt at bailing himself out because of the Celsius debacle. He shilled Celsius on his channel. Maybe he was sponsored by them. And this is his attempt to kind of walk it back and say, hey, I'm actually on your side. Um, nah. Uh, anyways, moving on. Hoddle never soddle. Great name. Uh, Bitcoin then and now. Uh, I wish I bought earlier 68,000 Bitcoin. 20,000 Bitcoin. It's a scam. It's going to zero. Human psychology is fascinating. Mm -hmm. This is very, very true. Um, I usually get a – like I usually have a good idea of when the Bitcoin price falls because I always get the text message from mom. Are you okay? Always, right? When it goes up, like – Nothing. crickets but when it goes down i'm like are you okay and i'm like mom like we got in 2016 like what, what's the problem here <laughs> what are you saying um anyways human psychology um so this is bitcoin strider um we need to buy the dip i've already bought the dip you've bought six dips yes but what about the seventh dip ah referencing um i think this was fellowship of the ring and then when they throw the potatoes, like, oh, let's have another breakfast. Uh, great, great reference. Great movies. Anyways, moving on. Uh, oh, shitcoiner. As shitcoiners make, sometimes they make great memes. Anyways, let's check it out. Crypto gallows humor is the best kind. They don't know I used to be a crypto millionaire working at McDonald's. Absolutely hilarious. All right, uh, by Lena Sheesh. Uh, at, first of all, she's great. Okay, she makes these memes. She draws them. It's not like reusing old source material. No, no, no. She, she, it's all original. Anyways, check it out. Print, burr, the economy. Print, burr, the economy. Print, burr, the economy. It's transitory. Inflation is good for you. The virus did it. It's the greedy corporations. It's Russia's fault. Oh. Oh man, they're full of crap. All right, moving on. Liberty Frontier. Can you talk like a normal like a normal person? The Federal Reserve is running the economy intentionally, ruining the economy intentionally. Owning a, own a 3D printer because the government hates us all. You know what? I would say I, I today I was listening to Ben Shapiro on YouTube, and yesterday we actually played a Jack Posobiec clip for you guys. Both of them mentioned that the Federal Reserve is the problem. The fact that these predominant mainstream commentators are meant are saying that th that ten years ago that would have never happened, right? So at least it's seeping into mainstream consciousness that the Fed is the problem. Anyways, next one by Sats Joseph, stack them in my treasure. No, Bitcoin is an unproductive asset. Have to wrap it on Ethereum deposit. Deposit it. We've we, I can't DeFi farm yield. You guys get the point. Stack of my treasure. And this is the bell curve joke, which I actually believe, by the way, right? Uh, the really intelligent people and then, you know, the the, the simpletons. Um, it was a video. I'm going to save this for tomorrow because that was a lot of memes, Phil. That was a lot of memes. Um, anyways, for those awesome memes, I'm going to give it a special edition open dime. What about Ooh. you, Phil? What would you give those memes? I know. I got a little carried away with, with all the memes. I was actually going to add like three more. But anyways, <laughs> but anyway, it's okay. They're coming tomorrow. They're coming tomorrow. Okay. So you know what? I am giving it this very unique. I did not know that this company does this. They give it's the Rip and Dick, the Rip and Dip sticker pack. When you, when you buy stuff from Rip and Dip, they give you a whole sticker pack. I don't know what that is, but it looks You know badass. I'm never opening this, so... No, no. Yeah. Phil, Phil likes things in mint. Anyways, um, I torture <laughs> Phil by by sticking stickers onto things, and he's like, no, nah, don't do that. Anyways, Dr. Ross, what would you give those memes? I don't normally give something of this quality, but today I'm going to give these memes the screaming goat. Man! Oh! Uh, yeah. Oh! Wait, one more time. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome scores for some awesome memes. Any guys, anyways, guys, we want to know if you agree with our stories. You disagree? Let us know down in the comment section. 
Uh, make sure to subscribe to us on alternative video platforms like rumble.com, bitcointv.com, and join our Telegram group. It's a party in there. Yeah. Anyways, Phil, it's time for The Daily Fail. Brought to you by Swan. Check them out. Swanbitcoin.com. That's right. It's the best way to build your Bitcoin stack with an automated Bitcoin savings plan, instant purchases. I'm hearing that the app is already out, so I'm reaching out to find out how we can get it there should be a release date. Anyways, it is a Bitcoin stacking app and a site by fellow plebs. Check them out. The link is down below. All right. On the narrative of everybody's making shit up as they go along. This is this is kind of the hypocritical problem that, that we run into. This is a fantastic retweet by Ghost of Becca. That's right. Fellow Bitcoin pleb and memer. So thank you very much for this retweet. And I'm pretty sure we were tagged by ICO Sonat in this one as he tags us in everything. Let's take a look here. What did what did Ghost of Becca have to say? Ruling class uses electricity, so it's good. Peasants and tax slaves use electricity, so it's bad. Same energy. And that's actually a really interesting point. So here we go. This was a retweet from the Bitcoin conference, and this is hilarious. A Tesla uses electricity, so it's good. Bitcoin uses electricity, so it's bad. Is that about right? And this is exactly part of the problem because they can't figure out the, the, the corporate owned media. And I, I guess you'd say politicians and all of these paid narratives, they can't get out of their own way. And the thing about Bitcoin is it's not run by anyone. It just continues to do what it does. And as we've said, Bitcoin exposes everyone's incentives. So we get stuff like this. That just goes to show the blatant, insane hypocrisy that is our current system. How can, it, I, it's not yeah. insane, Phil. It's not insane. They, what they want is that they want to be able to decide, and the whole ESG thing is premised on this. They want to be able to decide what electricity use is good and what electricity use is bad. Like, that's what it is. That sounds insane. That, that's what it's about, right? Yeah. It's not crazy to them. I'm just pointing. No, that no, out. I, I know it's not crazy to them. I definitely know it's not crazy to them, but I, I do think it's I do think it's crazy. Um, and and there was also another piece about you talking about ESG, but um, I, I never even knew this, but it was supposedly BlackRock that um, actually is the one of the biggest proponents of of ESG, and it's interesting as to how many businesses that they have their hands in. Anyways, anyways, Jeff, uh, before we move on to the the next tweet, uh, do you have any any comments on the uh, the hypocritical uh, power usage and or not power usage? You know, I think it was Nick Carter who first sort of opened my eyes to the problem here. You know, we spend our, our days trying to defend the energy usage of Bitcoin. And he basically whittled it down to you either hate Bitcoin or you're okay with it. And if you hate Bitcoin, you think it wastes energy, right? And so like, I always just turn it back on people. I'm like, well, is refrigeration a waste of energy? And, well, no, it's, you know, pretty helpful. What, what, air conditioning, like you don't need air conditioning. You just kind of want it, right? It's really hot in Florida. Probably you guys probably have your AC on. Um, Christmas lights. I mean, that's, that's a waste of energy kind of, isn't it? But it's kind of cool too. Don't we like Christmas lights? And so it's just completely subjective, all this stuff. Teslas, that, you know, are, the, are you wasting energy driving around a Tesla? What, what if you just didn't drive a Tesla at all? Then, you, then are you doing good for the environment? Anyways, it all comes down to, do you like Bitcoin or do you hate Bitcoin? If you have something against it, you think it wastes energy. If you don't have anything against it, you understand that Bitcoin, the energy usage is actually a, a feature, not a bug, right? Um, so anyways, that whole ESG narrative is mostly garbage garbage. Uh, I, I, and I, I know that the people who are into it have, some of them have good intentions and maybe even good hearts. They're, you know, they like the environment. I like the environment too. I want to save the environment. I want the planet to exist long after me and to be even healthier. Um, but the ESG narrative is basically just political garbage and hoopla, and it just drives me nuts. I completely agree. It's a system of control. It, yep. it truly is. Well, and it, go Oh, ahead. go ahead, Nico. Yeah, so the the BlackRock thing that you said was interesting. They aren't lo they're looking at it from a place of uh, monopoly power, right? Because it it like it, it, they set up a moat, right? It's it's very it's very difficult to be SG compliant, especially if you're like a small business, right? So in my opinion, they're really using that as like a mechanism to stomp out competition. That's the way that I'm looking at it. Um, but yeah, no, it's it from our perspective, it's evil. From their perspective. I don't know. Anyways, 
Yeah, from their perspective, they're, it's exactly what you just said, Nico. You hit the nail on the head. From their perspective, they've insured their moat. Mm. You know, that's exactly what it is under the guise of environmental social governance, right? Well, it, it, yeah. hold, I'm going to hold on, yeah. Phil. I want to pass it on to Jeff because we got time. Um, well, so. Oh, how did you know what else we were going to do? Oh, whoa, okay, okay. You think think that's it? You think I've got just this one story? (laughs) Okay, keep going, keep going. This one thing? (laughs) No, keep going, keep going. No, that was just our small rip. Come on. That was the warm up? That was the warm up. Yeah, that was the warm up, right? Oh, okay, all right. (laughs) It's the warm up rip. That was the okay. appetizer. All right. All That's right. right. Now now we're moving into now now we're moving into the other piece before we get into the real story. Okay. Right. So this is a tweet from Lisa Abramovich. Lisa, I I've actually reached out to you a few times. I want to get you to come on Simply Bitcoin. For some reason you follow me. I, I don't know why. Um <laughs> so I definitely want you to come on Simply Bitcoin because you have access to the traditional financial markets and I'd love to pick your brain. But anyways, this isn't just me asking for you to come on the show. This is us taking a look at this very interesting tweet and let's take a look at some quantitative tightening so here we go this is the tweet from lisa this was ostensibly the first week of quantitative tightening but it's hard to spot just looking at the fed's balance sheet which rose a tick to 8.918 trillion that's right quantitative tightening in these environments. You remember, Nico, how we've said that they've pretty much run out of all the options. <laughs> they can't they they can't really stop buying any of the, any of these assets. So they're in a really difficult position. They have to slow down the money printer. At the same time, they have to raise in, at the same time, they have to raise interest rates. But at the same time, they have to start letting go of these these assets on their balance sheet. How do we do all this? I'm going to give you a hint. We can't. We can't do it really easy. And so we're not going to have this soft landing that they're talking about. But again, I have zero creds. I'm just a pleb. And I don't really know what I'm talking about. So before we move before we move on to the main piece of our story, which is which is the corporate owned media trying to reframe El Salvador's decision. I want to get I want to get your thoughts, Nico, and then we're going to go to Jeff. Do you have any anything yeah, on this real quick? Because Jeff is absolutely more qualified to answer this than I am or me. And a quick, <laughs> quick observation. OK, the GDP of the U.S. is 20 million and the Fed balance sheet is eight. Sorry, 820 trillion and the Fed balance sheet is eight trillion. What the fuck? Excuse my language. I'm sorry. What the fuck is going on? That is crazy to me. Look. I'm a pleb, all right. I don't. I, I'm not a doctor like Doctor Ross, but is that is that crazy? Am, am I seeing th- that? That's not normal, is it? I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, this stuff just it's <laughs> they all, and all this is right. We're we're in, we're technically in QT, right? It just started. This is just a tiny, tiny little pause when you look at the grand cosmic scale of things. It, we're, we're in forever QE. We're already in QE forever. They like to pretend that they can do things like control things and they can tighten and it'll be okay. And the markets are going to get absolutely ruined. People are get, lives are going to be devastated. Businesses are going to get crushed. Demand is going to get destroyed. That's actually what their goal is to destroy demand, to bring the supply demand uh, equation back into balance, which is insane, by the way. That's totally socialist thinking like, hey, we can't figure out how to improve things. So let's just bring everything down to get the equation to be in balance. It just drives me nuts. Um, so this is a, a slight little pause in the quantitative easing. Uh, they'll be back to it. Don't worry. It robust. Q- QE4, I've been on record of saying this, QE4 is going to absolutely dwarf QE1, 2, and 3 combined, and it's going to be insane, right? With the next asset bubble inflation is coming, it's not going to be for a while, probably next year, 2023, 2024, um, but it's going to be insane. So buckle up for that. Get ready. Stack sats while you can. Stack sats while, while they're cheap because they won't be cheap for that much longer. Oh, wow. But it, it, Phil, Phil, go ahead. I was just going to say the the key the key term to to what Jeff just said about bringing everyone down we should all remember the term equitability okay cuz that that's yeah. that, that that's the that that's kind of the uh that that that's kind of the the shit with the bow on it right that people <laughs> think they're getting as a present yes. you know but but inside of it is is just total scam I'm sorry Nico go on No 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 dude let's let's hit the El Salvador I'm really excited right, to see we what go. you found about El Salvador All right here we go. Let's dive into it. And and 
you know what? That totally goes on the heels of El Salvador, right? So look, so we all know what just happened in, with the Bitcoin price, right? We're sitting in the 20K region. People are all of a sudden, oh, what have I done? Okay. Well, imagine you were a country, right? And the country was buying Bitcoin like El Salvador. So let's dive into what the corporate owned media is spinning this as. Bitcoin boosting Salvadoran leader may have second thoughts. That's the headline. Okay. Pay attention to the, that's what the headline is. Now let's actually dive into the story. So right here, you know that all this was, was clickbait. I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to ruin it for everyone. It's complete clickbait. Let's dive into the article. El Salvador's Bitcoin boosting president may be having second thoughts about the cryptocurrency whose value has tanked in recent weeks. Hmm. Under President Nayib Bukele's administration has bought a total amount of one hundred and five million in Bitcoin starting last September and paying an average of almost forty six thousand per coin. The value of that investment is now calculated to have fallen by over 50 percent or around fifty one million. When a Bitcoin publication crowed that El Salvador has lost only 40 million on its investment in the currency, also known as BTC. Bukele tweeted with apparent incredulity Tuesday. You're telling me we should buy more BTC. He's a stacker. He's definitely a stacker. So now the finance minister of El Salvador saying that because El Salvador hasn't sold any of its Bitcoin, it hasn't really suffered any loss. I agree with that. When they tell me that El Salvador's budgetary risk has increased because of the supposed loss, that loss doesn't exist, Zalea said, and that's the uh, finance minister. That must be made clear because we have not sold. It's the finance minister. OK, and on top of that, the president was sitting there saying, so we should be buying this dip. OK, anyways. Most com most companies and governments do write down the value of what accountants call an unrealized loss. To be perfectly honest, that's neither here nor there. If they didn't sell their Bitcoin, it, it really this is like a zero fucks given statement. And they just kind of put it out there in order to kind of breed some fear. It's like, well, wait a second. Are, are, are they trying to hide something? Anyways, Zalea also insisted the Bitcoin slide doesn't matter very much for El Salvador, saying that this doesn't even represent 0.5% of our budget. In January, El Salvador rejected the recommendation by the International Monetary Fund to drop Bitcoin as legal tender. Remember, we covered Why is this that there. <laughs> it, like, it really shows who calls the shots, right? Why? Like, why is that included in the article? What? Oh, man. Anyway. Exactly. So the IMF, right? And we know and we see this is from ABC. So the giant corporate circle jerk. Anyways, Zelaya said at the time that no international organization is going to make us do anything at all, calling it an issue of sovereignty. And he's absolutely correct. The IMF recommended that El Salvador dissolve the $150 million trust it created when it made the cryptocurrency legal tender and return any of those unused funds to its treasury. That's right. OK, we are going to be the competent ones. The IMF cited concerns about the volatility of Bitcoin prices, the possibility of criminals using the cryptocurrency. And we've already shown, right, Christine Lagarde, convicted felon. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, this is just complete nonsense. We had Dr. Ron Paul on to show that all of these KYC AML regulations only help to facilitate the criminals so that they can check the boxes and make it through. Anyways, and we also showed HSBC and all their money laundering. So yada, yada. Here we go. Bukele has touted Bitcoin as a way to significantly increase financial inclusion. Interesting. Interesting that Bitcoin is mentioned with financial inclusion, because we always say that Bitcoin's a voluntary system. Everyone can come join Bitcoin or leave Bitcoin as they please. A true inclusive currency. Anyways, drawing millions of people who previously lacked bank accounts into the financial system. That's right. Bitcoin actually does bank the unbanked. Now, here we go. Let's go take a look. See, the IMF, the IMF has this really interesting thing that they do. They've they've got their own funny money that they give to people that we've talked about in the past. But for some reason, people don't seem to pay attention enough to this basket of bullshit. So we're going to we're going we're gonna to revisit it again. Right. Let's let's take a look. Special drawing rights. Now, what's really interesting about SDRs, OK, 
SDRs are, just before I dive into this, SDRs are made up of a basket of other fiat currencies, which are centrally controlled and printed. So it, it, it's literally just um, fiat into another fiat that can only be used by countries. That's what SDRs are, right? An individual human being cannot have an SDR, go to a store, pay for groceries with it. This is special country funny money. Mm. Anyways, anyways, I will proceed here and finish. Let's take a look at this piece right here. A special one-time allocation, and this is what I found interesting, in 2009, Right? What happened in uh, in two thousand and nine around that time? Mm. Did uh, did we have a did we have a huge financial crisis bailout? Maybe some kind of a QE that took place? Maybe it was QE one. I, I I don't know. Anyways, but in two thousand and nine, they enabled the countries that joined the IMF after nineteen eighty one, and this is the piece that I like to participate in the SDR system on an equitable mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. they, you see, we're doing you a favor by giving you this shit money and by making sure that you stay in our ecosystem under our control. Now, let's just take a quick look at this graph before we wrap up and riff on this. Look at what look, look at 2021. Look at all of those. Look, SDRs at, look at the that year. Given look out. at the year that they started. 1970, 1972. What happened no. in 1971? Bingo. Huh? Is that so a coincidence? <laughs> It's kind of weird, right? So in 1971, right? And no, and you're absolutely right because they started making the SDRs as soon as the gold got, as soon as gold was, uh, the dollar was depegged from gold. And then all of a sudden in 2009, um, being the good Samaritans that they were, they allowed other countries to take advantage of these low rates. And as we can see in 2021, just at kind of like the, uh, the, the, the peak will say ending of, of the virus, which shall not be named. They managed to help so many countries, the most countries they've ever helped with their funny money. So look, at the end of the day, it's exactly what Nico said, right? These countries, um, the, I, the IMF, we, we can see who's pulling the strings, okay? And the IMF wants to make sure that everybody understands that they are the ones in control and that they are the ones who know best for everyone. Now, going back to the beginning of this article, where did anyone actually see that Naib Bukele was second guessing his Bitcoin purchase in all of this? Like, think of the crap I just went through. I, I, I mean, Jeff, we'll start with you. Was there anywhere in there that you felt that Naib Bukele or the finance minister um, was actually second guessing their purchase of the hardest asset known to humanity? Well, obviously not. And amazingly, the obviously the author of this, right, the reporter got to hand pick what quotes to put in there. They were all exactly the opposite of what the, you know, the the clickbait title um, inferred. So mm -hmm. it's just such nonsense. I mean, it's we just it's an absolute clown world fiasco that we're living through right now. So I, I think, man, that that is like a very highly bullish Bitcoin article. Right. I mean, these guys are like true Bitcoiners. They're like, sweet, it's cheap. I'm going to buy more. You know, that's fantastic because they have no doubt where Bitcoin is going. Uh, if it's cheaper, that means it's just a better buy right now. So they're going to hopefully swap more of their fund. Hopefully IMF will give them some of these SDRs and they can, you know, swap them for some Bitcoin for some actual real money. That won't happen, obviously. But um, yeah, I thought I thought that uh, article was actually pretty inspiring once you look past the clickbait title. Completely agreed. Nico? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we've been, we're, I, and I take, I take, we take pride. Better said, um, we take pride in being one of the only channels that at least provide a counter narrative to the mainstream media. Again, legacy media. Better said, attack on El Salvador. Right? Look, it, Ukraine sovereignty is important. El Salvador, no, no, no. Bitcoin is bad, and that really shows, right? That how much this scares the powers that be, like how much this scares the living crap out of them, right? And how essential the IMF played in controlling other countries, really, through through dangling this carrot on a stick, right? Um, so it, it's absolutely disgusting. And I really stand with the people of El Salvador. I stand with Naim Bukele. 
And yeah, like this, they're fighting for freedom. That's what they're really doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wish them the best of luck. But anyways, Phil, there was an open source software release today. Why do you tell everybody about it? Software releases. Brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out, CypherSafe.io. Paper's dead. You can't store your seed there. It can burn. It can get wet. Turn to mush. Store your seed in the Cypher wheel or the all-new Cypher grid. They both come with a tamper-resistant wire, and the grid comes with a punch tool. All right. We've got Fountain FM podcast version 0.3.20 that was released. That's right, guys. If you want to stream sats to... Any of the podcasters using podcasting 2.0, check out fountain.fm. They just released a new version. It's down below in the show notes. And of course, don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. And if you want to stream us sats, that's right. You can stream us sats through Breeze on fountain.fm. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, before we go, I want to give a very quick shout out to fellow pleb. Pirate Beach Bum, definitely check out his writings, Bitcoin Bear Market Diaries 2022, and our clothing sponsor, represent ltd.com. Phil and I wear the hoodies every single day. Phil's wearing the nice. Bitcoin merch. I'm wearing represent, the represent. Really cool stuff, high quality hoodies, and you can take advantage of the promo code down below to get 10% off representltd.com store. Also, very, very, very special shout out to our awesome guest, the legendary Dr. Jeff Ross. He is the pleb counselor. He's the founder CEO of Valshire Capital. Valeshire, Vale, ah, Valeshire Capital. Um, definitely go check out his Twitter high signal definitely recommend the follow anyways guys that was our show if you enjoyed the show you know what to do smash that like button and of course you want to continue hearing the bitcoin news from the plead pleb perspective and the catastrophic fails from the same perspective definitely consider subscribing to simply bitcoin and we'll see you tomorrow guys for a brand new episode we're living in a clown world but nobody's laughing better believe that bitcoin fixes this